going to say a few key takeaways that I always write down. It's um, a lot of information. It's just that good quality data like we've been stressing is valuable. It's going to create a market where it's potentially just earn an income. And uh, quality data collection is advanced. Like how do we know that the variety of answers the pounds of what product? The automation of being able to have accurate label data is advancing to partnerships with companies like Farm Mobile. We're here to help as one of your partners understand all of that complexity, how we make it easy so that that experience is transferred to you guys. That's great. I think we're at, Andrew's going to come up and summarize a little bit. Uh, some of the trials and the information of your guys' data in this room that those we have individually have already seen the rest of their schedule in the next couple of months. Um, and after that, I have a quick little break. So, welcome, Andrew. Okay, yeah, thanks Corey for the introduction. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Andrew Lambers. Um, a little history about myself. I grew up on a dairy farm in Central Wright County after I graduated from high school. I attended the University of Minnesota in Crookston and graduated from there with a degree in crop production and a little some precision ag courses. And it's kind of cool today. I have a professor in the back who can actually verify that, so that's the first time that I'm meeting. So I do have a little bit of credentials. <laughs> Um, so a little bit about why I'm here today, um, the topics that we're going to talk about, and I want you guys to keep in mind as we go through these, um, a lot of this clean, like clean cut information that I can run through pretty quick. So if you have any questions about the trials that I will go over, raise your hand, ask a question. So after I get done with the trial results, it's going to lead me into why I think you guys as your best customers should feel more confident in the results of trials that you perform on your farm or we present to you as group data than maybe what your neighbor can uh, claim you can feel confidence with the tools that they're using. And that's going to lead me into a little bit about uh, benchmark reports. That's something people have claimed they wanted information from. This year's a little bit different. I'll talk about machine utilization. And then I'll wrap it up with uh, how you as Google Plus growers will have access to a lot of these trials. Um, and, uh, and how you can do them maybe faster. Now, if not any questions, um, our 2018 trials, like I said, uh, it's pretty simple information. I got a pretty easy job today, so I'm going to cruise through them pretty fast. If you have questions, uh, make sure to raise your hand and I'll try and answer them. So the first uh, trial that we are looking at here is just fungicide performance on soybeans as a whole. And there's a lot of different ways you can look at fungicides when they're applied and how they're applied multiple times. But what we're looking at specifically is one application of a fungicide applied at R1 with the correct adjuvants and comparing it against F, um, untreated acre right next to it. And the uh, acres that we were able to test this year added up to about 942 acres. And our average yield response was 3.32 bushels. And that number comes from multiple different products that you can see up there, including Draxer, Astrology Headline, uh, Proline, and Endura. So the picture that you show, the picture on the right that I show there, um, I ran across this on the University of Minnesota Extension Research uh, website, and I just threw it up there because I found it was very interesting uh, how close our data that we pull out of our Uliquest group is to the university's um, statistical research. Yeah, also. Is there any question on fungicides on soybeans? I'll move on to uh, fungicides again, but this time on corn. Uh, applying fungicides to corn is maybe a little bit newer practice I've noticed since I've been working at Central Soda. So this year we wanted to te test applications applied at BT or R1. We used two different products, Driver Pro and Headline. So we were comparing those products applied with the correct adjuvants in the fields, comparing it to a completely untreated acre. So far, right now, we have 620 acres analyzed, but by the end of the winter year, we should have over 1,000, and we found an average yield response of 5.85 bushels. And since there's only two products here, I threw up there the average for Tribe Pro and Headline AMP, and this year you can see that Tribe Pro did have about three quarters of a bushel advantage so far. 
Next product I want to talk about was presented to you guys a little bit last year, but we tested it again this year. It's a product called Loibro, a bio-stimulant fertilizer that's going to help mitigate stress on corn. Um, picture on the right shows national data from Winfield United. In the 2014, they were able to realize a 5.23 bushel an acre advantage. So a product that consistently does that, we obviously want to try locally on your guys' fields. And combined acres of 364 in 2017 and 2018 so far, we realized a 9.655 bushel advantage. So again, trying these products in trials is going to help realize that maybe our region of the world is going to perform better than national results. So pretty big information there. If you're one of the people who uh, tried Boy Girl this last year, I hope you're calling Donnie or whoever your salesman might be and say, hey, let's try more of it this year. Maybe Donnie already sold you a pallet of it, I don't know. But. So moving past Boy Girl, um, we talk about two micronutrients next. The first is maxing zinc on corn. Micronutrients applications aren't necessarily new um, to the growers in this room, but they're still being tested. Uh, this year we ended up with 167 acres in analyze so far and we're applying the product at D5 with the herbicide application and we're comparing it against no max and zinc in the tank and also applying herbicide at the same time. So on 167 acres this year we were able to realize a 6.25 bushel advantage. It's mostly tested in our southern territory. I know a lot of the growers that I see here are from our southern area but it's something I feel that National results are telling us we should try it throughout our whole group. The next micronutrient is Maxin Ultra ZMB. Again, it's a foliar nutrient applied with the sprayer at the D5 time frame. Um, with the correct application, with the correct adjuvants, this year we were able to test 148 acres and we an average of 9.45 bushel response. So it's a little bit higher than Maxin Zinc. Max and Zinc has been a staple for a few guys the past few years. So maybe trying ZMB compared to Zinc on your farm is something you want to do for 2019. But pretty good information as a group as a whole. And I think uh, maybe uh, talk with your crop advisor and see if you can try a little bit this year. Yeah. Were those uh, tissue sampled prior to those applications? Do you know if the acres that participated were tissue sampled before we made an application of a foliar zinc? I'd assume that the acres have a history of tissue sampling on their fields. Um, you, request, you guys as request growers over the past few years have been collecting tissue samples and the reason why maybe we're trying these products is the fact that the crop advisor and grower have realized there's information gathered with those tissue samples is why uh, this product is being tested. But if, these, if this exact um, or if the data I'm showing you here was tissue sampled um, prior to the application, I can't answer that right now. I'd have to track down the grower and see why they uh, applied that product or if there's a tissue sample. Take it. Um, on your trial with Pro and, and uh, Headline AM trials, did you collect any data on uh, foliar applied through a ground rig or aerial or did you end up seeing any results from doing that? Yeah, I blew right through this one. I kind of should slow down a little bit, but the one note I wanted to make on the fungicide application on corn this year, we only considered uh, trials, the, the information I'm showing you, we only considered trials that were applied with ground rigs. So the, reason, the main reason we did this is you get more accurate information uh, coming out of a sprayer than you're going to get out of a plant. If you, uh, if you can find a plane that has the technology to, to do it as applied maps, um, I don't feel it's as accurate. Um, we're hoping in 2019 to publish a little bit of information comparing ground applied applications of 20 gallons an acre versus an airplane that's spraying one, two, maybe three if you pay them a little bit extra. So all the information you're looking at here and all the information that is going to show up uh, to you guys in the future here is <coughs> this year is um, applied with a ground rig. You can see the pictures there. I wrote about this pretty cool. So. Andrew, were those uh, trials taken in the part of the field when corn was in 40 bushels? These trials were stripped across. Um, for all these trials, 
I picked information that had a pretty good trial design. That means there was multiple checks within the field. We left areas that were treated versus areas that were untreated and made sure that they were alternating across the whole field. Pretty consistent on hybrid or? Yeah, so again, four of these trials, um, actually I can kind of speak because there was somebody I worked with, but um, both of these, all of these trials um, were one hybrid across the field. And now I'll dive into it a little bit about the, what, the information I'm showing you, um, why it's, um, you can feel confident even if there was multiple hybrids in the field. Uh, we'll dive into that reason also. Alright, Max and Ultra VMB. Okay, we're down to the last two already. Um, so, toggle is a biostimulant. Um, you can talk with your crop advisors, I'm sure you've already heard some talking, but biostimulants are kind of a new product on the market. I'd assume over the next couple of years we're going to be doing a lot more testing. Uh, there's companies out there claiming that you have a cup of sugar on the ground. You might get a decent yield response. Um, so anything that activate or uh, uh, used by algae in the soil or in the plant um, is something I think we'll see a lot more of. 2018 data, I'm not showing you that right now. Uh, we had a hiccup with getting information off of uh, my job here. Uh, but one, one thing you guys weren't exposed to last year is our 2017 data. Toggle tested on corn in one field on 36 acres, gave us an average yield response of 2.2 bushels. So it's not that big of a number, but I would like to see more products like Toggle, more Boy and Grow, uh, tested on more acres to get a better data set. Uh, 2000, we will see 2018 data. Thank you. Um, depends on the sale of the sold to you now. <laughs> Bill, no, um, toggle ballparking, a lot of these products, micronutrients, biostimulants, it seems like they always try to land in the five, seven, 5 to 10 bushel range, depending on what their national data is claiming. Um, so it's always, five to seven five, I'm sorry, sorry, 5 to 7 dollars, depending on what their, their data is claiming for bushel response. But a lot of this stuff, besides the fungicides, is hanging around sub 10 dollars. You also got to keep in consideration, you always want to, want to add the correct adjuvants to the tank too to make that product perform from how it's designed. Yeah? So the product that you had up there, I started with a B, like nine and four bushel response. Started with a B? A B. Boy, boy, boy girl. Yeah, right here. What was the average yield in that? What was the yield environment? Was it 150 bushel corn? Was it 220 bushel corn? What was the yield environment on that acre? Well, um, from what I can tell you right now, is this product was tested in the central and south region of Central Soak's footprint. Um, those are two completely different growing environments. They can be completely different growing environments. But when I was putting this together, I can tell you that we were. All, all the growing environments were had the potential to be well above 200. It was irrigated sands and black soil. Yeah. Alright, any more questions on Taco before I move on to the last one, real quick? So, the last one I want to talk to you guys about. Uh, Called Nema Strike. It's a uh, seed, treat, uh, seed applied treatment used at the planting time. And this trial was conducted on 200, well, the trials added up to 249 acres total. And what we were comparing is just the standard seed treatment on soybean seed of an insecticide and a fungicide versus the product that had a seed treatment, including an insecticide, fungicide, and an amatocide. So I'm quite, the one thing I kind of want to point out to you guys is our average that I'm showing you is negative 0.95. So I'm not necessarily trying to show, sell you everything that we're showing you today. Um, the fact is that I only had a certain amount of trials that I believe were good enough to show you as a group. And this trial was designed very well, was executed correctly, and it was negative 0.595. 
I want you to know that that doesn't mean we should continue to not want to test that. Maybe the product wasn't placed correctly. You know, talking with your crop advisor about products that you see um, in, uh, in the magazine or that we talk to you as a group of YieldQuest customers, um, keep in mind those products should be chosen for you to be tested on your farm for a reason. So maybe this didn't perform because you have no nematodes in the soil. Just something to keep in mind. It wasn't all negative. We had a yield response range of 1.7 to negative 3.6, so there was some positive in there. <laughs> so that's all our products. I was going to talk to you guys about it. Um, there's only seven trials, um, and the fact is, I can talk to like we could keep track of all the side by side and all the trials that every farmer performs, but I don't think it's good enough information. Um, to show you guys. So I want to go over uh, why continued product testing is important on your farm and what makes YieldQuest trial that uh, a little bit better than what your neighbor may be doing. So why do we do on-farm trials? We're all smart. It's a pretty simple question to answer and we're all smart enough to realize that new does not always equal better and just because it performs well nationally does not mean that it's going to perform well locally for you. So on-farm trials <coughs> is your guys' way of doing research, gaining experience, and building confidence that this product may be a good treatment to use on your entire farm. And that building confidence is what I kind of want to expand upon. And, uh, I feel that there's a lot of growers out there that may be building false confidence with the tools that they're using. So why I want you guys to feel comfortable with the fact that the trials you perform on your own farm or the information that we give you through our YieldQuest group is better than what your neighbor may be experiencing or